A technical skills hiring assessment test is designed to evaluate candidates' expertise and knowledge in a specific field or discipline. This test typically includes questions, tasks, or challenges related to the technical skills and competencies required for the job. Technical skills assessment test assesses candidates' ability to apply their technical knowledge, solve problems, and demonstrate proficiencies in the areas such as programming, engineering, IT, or other specialized domain. Most of the time, in addition to technical skills, assessment test contains various cognitive and soft skill questions to better understand candidates' communication, analytical skills, and their ability to interpret the information. The result of the technical skill test helps employers identify the most qualified candidates for the technical roles. Hi there, this is Vadim from Online Training for Everyone. And in this video, I'll share with you how to pass an assessment test and get you hired for your dream job. When companies are hiring, very frequently, HR and hiring managers would like to test the candidate to make sure candidate possesses the skills and knowledge that will make him successful in the job. To determine the answer, employers use a computerized assessment tests to assess candidate skills and experience relevant to the job. Assessment tests are also helpful to determine candidate's potential and make sure a new hire makes the right decisions on the job. In this video, you will have everything you need to get prepared for an assessment test. Make sure to watch this video from the beginning to end and if necessary, multiple times until you understand all the questions and know how to solve them easily. If you would like to practice with the most recent questions for the assessment, please make sure to follow the link in the description and in comments of this video. And now, let's go ahead and get started so we can get you prepared. I think this question is not just about engineering, but also about your critical thinking and analytical skills. If you use the same bow to shoot arrows at angles of 45 degrees, 0 degrees, and 60 degrees, which angle will make the arrow travel the farthest? You have four possible choices. Choice A, 45 degrees. Choice B, 0 degrees. Choice C, 60 degrees. And last but not least, choice D, neither one. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the analysis and answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Let's start by looking at the scenario where we shoot the arrow at zero degrees, which ultimately means horizontal shot. When you shoot it at zero degrees, it means you're firing it horizontally parallel to the ground. In this case, the arrow initial velocity is responsible for its horizontal distance because there is no vertical component in its motion. What's interesting here is that the arrow will cover some horizontal distance, but it won't travel very far because gravity starts acting on it immediately, pulling it downward. Now let's compare it to shooting an arrow at a 60 degree angle. This means we are launching it at a steeper angle upward compared with even 45 degree angle. What's interesting in this case is that while it still have a horizontal component, more of its initial velocity is directed upward. As a result, the arrow will reach a greater height but cover less horizontal distance before it hits the ground. Which brings us to the 45 degree angle solution. If you want to make sure your arrow reach farthest horizontal distance, you should shoot it at a 45 degree angle. 45 degree angle allows for the best balance between horizontal and vertical components of an arrow's motion, maximizing its range. So the correct answer here is choice B, 45 degrees. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to share your thoughts and rationale in comments so we can all learn. In this section, we will look at some sample mechanical aptitude questions you typically see on the test. A mechanical aptitude test is an assessment designed to measure a person's understanding of mechanical principles and the ability to apply them in various situations. Mechanical aptitude tests typically assess several key areas, including mechanical comprehension questions, which gauge your understanding of basic mechanical principles such as gears, pulleys, levers, and simple machines. You also get spatial reasoning questions in this test, which assess your ability to mentally manipulate the objects in three-dimensional space. Some questions focus on tools and instruments, and they evaluate your familiarity with common tools and instruments used in mechanical work. And last but not least category is mechanical problem-solving questions, 
which present you with mechanical problems or scenarios and test your ability to analyze and solve them. Let's look at some sample mechanical aptitude questions we typically see on the test. This is one of the most exciting questions because it allows you to test your analytical skills and understanding of physics. You need to determine which fan throws more air if all the fans rotate at the same speed. The choices are fan A, fan B, fan C, and last but not least, choice D, neither fan. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might be well aware, there are two key factors to help determine the airflow rate. The first one is the size of the fan's blade. And the second one is rotational speed of the fan, which is measured in RPMs, which stands for revolution per minute. A fan with the larger blades can capture and move more air per revolution compared to the same fan design with the smaller blades. And this is exactly what we're dealing with here in this question. In addition, the rotational speed of the fan affects the airflow design. The higher RPM generally results in the higher airflow rate as the fan blades are able to move through the air at the faster rate. As you can see here, the fans A, B, and C all have the same design. This is why, given the fact that three fans have the same design but different sizes, the fan with the largest size will throw more air compared to the smaller fans. This is why the correct answer here is choice C. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please share your answer and rationale in comments. And now I have a question for you to practice your skills. You are presented with the seesaw. On the left of the seesaw there is a weight, and on the right side of the seesaw there is an acrobat. You need to determine in which direction should the acrobat move his body to balance the seesaw. And you have two choices, choice A to the left or choice B to the right. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. And once ready, make sure to post your answer in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck solving the challenge. In this section, we will look at Microsoft Excel questions frequently used in a test. Microsoft Excel test is a standardized assessment designed to measure an individual's proficiency in using this powerful spreadsheet software application. This test assesses a candidate's knowledge and skills in various Excel functions, formulas, data manipulation formatting, and data analysis. It is commonly used by employers during the hiring process to determine a candidate's level of Excel proficiency. This assessment typically includes a variety of Excel tasks and exercises that range from basic to more advanced functionalities within Microsoft Excel. These tasks might involve creating and formatting spreadsheets, performing calculations using formulas and functions, managing data sets, creating charts and graphs, and demonstrating an understanding of data analysis techniques. Let's look at some sample Microsoft Excel test questions we typically see on the test. Here's an interesting question to test your knowledge of Excel formulas and functions. June is a small business owner, and she recorded her sales figures in an Excel spreadsheet. She needs to calculate total sales for 2022. Which of the following formulas will calculate the total sales correctly? You're presented with the snapshot of data from Microsoft Excel, and you need to select one out of four possible choices. Choice A equals sum B3 through B6. Choice B equals add and then in parentheses B3 through B6. Choice C equals total and then in parentheses B3 through B6. And last but not least, choice D equals product and then in parentheses equals B3 minus B6. Do you know the answer? I have full confidence that you can quickly solve this challenge. And I'm going to move forward to share with you my answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. To solve this challenge, you need to understand the data and know Microsoft Excel formulas and functions. As you might have figured out, the correct answer here is choice A equals sum and then in parentheses range B3 through B6. Sum function in Excel adds up the range of numbers. And to calculate the total sales for 2022, we need to add up all the sales figures for all quarters in 2022. As you can see, column B represents the sales data for 2022. 
and rows 3 through 6 represent quarterly sales. Now we know that the correct answer is choice A equals sum and then in parentheses cell B3 through B6. Let's look at why other options are incorrect. Option B, add values B3 through B6 is not a valid Excel formula. Option C, total B3 through B6 is also not a valid Excel formula. And choice product B3 minus B6 will multiply the values in the range B3 through B6 together and it will not give you the total sales for 2022. In fact, if you looked at the choice D, the value supplied is not even the range. It's the difference between the values of B3 and B6 because we're supplying only one argument which is the result of mathematical operation B3 minus B6. And in fact, the output of this function product B3 minus B6 will be negative because it's a result of a subtraction of 337 minus 439 and the end result will be negative 101.91. Do you have any other thoughts or considerations about this question? Please make sure to share them in comments. In this section, we will look at the programming assessment test questions, which are frequently used during job interviews or recruitment process to evaluate candidates' coding skills and problem-solving abilities. Candidates are typically given coding tasks or challenges that require writing, debugging, or optimizing code in a specific programming language. The test aims to assess the candidate's ability to translate algorithms into functional code, find errors, and write efficient solutions within a given time frame. Let's look at some specific programming test questions we typically see on the test. Here's an interesting question where you need to calculate the final value of result. You're presented with the subroutine, where A equals to 5, B equals to 3. Then comes the condition. If A is greater than 5 and B is greater than 3, then result meets condition, else result does not meet condition. Take a close look to see if you can calculate the final value of result. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To find the final value of result, I entered this code into the Visual Basic Editor. I'm going to put breakpoint where the code is going to stop during the execution to see how the condition is going to be met or not. I'm going to launch the code and let's continue. But basically the initial value of A is 5 and initial value of B is 3. And as you might have guessed, the result does not meet condition. And this is exactly what's going to display it in the message box at the end of the routine. Did you get to the same answer? Did you know why the final answer was like this? Ultimately, this is the test on your logical understanding. The A here is 5, and 5 is not greater than 5. B equals to 3, but B is not greater than 3. So, ultimately, numbers do not meet condition. That's why we get the final value of results variable as do not meet condition. I truly hope your answer was the same and you came to the same conclusion. Here's an amazing question to test your programming skills. You need to determine the value of A after the execution of the program. And you're presented with the program. Initial value of A is 15. Then the logic goes do until A is less or equal to 4. Then we enter the loop. If A is greater than 3, then A equals A minus 2. Else we exit do and then we exit the loop. Because when you finish the calculation, you need to select the final value of A out of four possible choices. Choice A, 0. Choice B, 1. Choice C, 2. And last but not least, choice D, 3. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. I think I calculated my solution, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, or you calculated a different answer, please make sure to post in comments. To demonstrate the calculation and logic, I entered this program inside the Visual Basic Editor. This editor is available in any Microsoft Office product like Microsoft Word, PowerPoint or Excel. The logic is the same. The only thing I'm going to add, I'm going to add a logic to demonstrate the message box after final value of A is calculated. 
This editor allows us to stop the program by using the breakpoint, which I am going to do on the statement do until. Now, when I click run the program, the application stops and I can navigate and see the values of variables. In this case, a equals 15. And a meets condition because 15 is greater than 4. So we're going to enter the if loop. And I'm going to continue step by step. And you see that the value of a is going to decrement by 2. Based on the condition, we're going to enter the loop. An initial value of a is 15. But because 15 is greater than 3, we're going to inside the loop and inside the if condition and we're going to decrement a from 15, a equals 15 minus 2, which would be equal to 13. Then the loop continues, and we enter the if condition again, because 13 is greater than 3. We're going to do another decrement, and subtract 2 again, and the new value of a is going to be 11. So now you know how the program works. Can you estimate what the final value of a is going to be? Because on my end, I am going to remove the breakpoint and let the program run until we see the message box. Let's do it. You see that the final value of A is 3. Did this meet your answer? The answer might be confusing, so let's run the program step by step again and specifically focus on the last iteration. I'm going to put the breakpoint and run it quickly until we reach the last iteration. Value of A is 13. Value of A is 11. 9, 7, 5, 3. This is the last iteration. Here we're going to do it step by step. Because 4 is greater than 3, we're still going to enter. Because 4 is greater than 3, we're going to meet the do until condition and we're not gonna enter inside the loop. Our next statement in the logic will be to display the message box where we're gonna show the final value of A and the final value of A is 3. So the correct answer here is choice D, 3. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer solution rationale in comments. In this section, we will look at numerical reasoning test questions frequently used in a test. Numerical reasoning assessment test is a standardized evaluation designed to assess individuals' ability to understand and work with numerical data, make calculations, interpret charts and graphs, and draw conclusions from quantitative information. The typical content of numerical reasoning tests can vary, but often include topics such as basic arithmetic, percentage and ratios, data interpretation, financial analysis, mathematical problem solving, number sequences, and a lot of others. Let's look at some sample numerical reasoning assessment test questions we typically see on the test. Here is one of my favorite questions to test your analytical skills and attention to details. You need to determine which of the values is the smallest. And you're presented with five different values. The choices are A, 3 fourth, choice B, 0 0.6, choice C, 7 twelfth, choice D, 0 0.7, and last but not least, choice E, 4 fifth. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer, and obviously if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To get to the correct answer, we need to convert all the values to the common format. You can convert all the values to decimals, or you convert all the values to fractions, it doesn't matter, but it has to be common. I chose decimal format. 3 fourths in decimal is 0 0.75, 0 0.6 is 0 0.6 and 7 12th is 0 0.583. 0 0.7 has the same value, and 4 5th is 0 0.8. Now you can easily see that the smallest value is choice C, 7 12th, which is approximately as 0 0.58333. Did you get to the similar solution? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. This is one of my favorite questions because it tests your analytical skills as well as your abilities to identify sequences. You're presented with the series of numbers and you need to identify the pattern and select the option that completes the series. Take a close look at the numbers. The numbers are 2, 5, 9, 14 and 20 in the first row. Second row is 
3, 6, 10, 15, and 21. The third row is 4, 8, 13, 19, and 26. And last but not least, the fourth row has the series of numbers 1, 2, 4, 7, 11, and then comes the missing number. You need to detect the pattern and select the missing number out of four possible choices. Choice A, 17. Choice B, 16. Choice C, 23. And last but not least, choice D, 18. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? Because I already found my solution, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The key to solve these types of challenges is obviously to identify the pattern and not to overthink it. If we look at the series of numbers, we have four independent rows, and each row represents an independent sequence which follows the same pattern. So what is the pattern? And the pattern here is rather simple. The next number is calculated as previous number plus the increment. An increment increases by one with each subsequent number. Let's look at the example on how calculations are done for the first row of numbers. In the first calculation, the increment is 3. 2 plus 3 equals 5. Then increment increases by 1 and from 3 becomes 4, which means 5 plus 4 equals 9. Then increment increases again and 9 plus 5 equals 14. 14 plus 6 equals 20. I'm going to skip rows 2 and 3 so you can do calculations independently to practice your skills but I am going to do the calculations for the last row. 1 plus 1 equals 2. Increment increases by 1, so 2 plus 2 equals 4. 4 plus 3 equals 7. 7 plus 4 equals 11. And last calculation, 11 plus 5 equals 16. So the correct answer here is choice A, 16. Did you get to the same answer? If not, maybe you have a better way to solve it, so please make sure to post in comments so we can all learn. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this, and when you tell us, we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.